What's up? I'm Brendan Vanson from Brendan Vanson Photography, and today we're going to do getting the shot here in Shangri La, China. So behind me we have the Songzan Lin Temple, it's a huge Buddhist monastery and it's awesome, it's very impressive and so I'm going to go around and from start to finish here I'm going to show you the process of getting a couple shots here at the temple. So the shot I really want is way outside, zoomed in on the buildings. But we've got a lot of time before the light goes down so we're going to go inside and do some shooting inside the temple and just around up close with a super wide lens. Check this place out, how awesome is that? By far the coolest thing we've seen in all of Asia so far. Absolutely love it. And the shots are actually coming out really cool now because we're getting nice soft afternoon light. That's what you go for. Architectural photography, just like landscape photography, you want that soft afternoon light. So it's about five o'clock now, sun goes down at eight. We're gonna shoot right until the sun goes down and then just a little bit after it. Let's go. So the biggest part of getting the shot is actually going out and scouting and finding your images. And what I like to do is actually create a shoot plan. So basically what that means is I scout out the area and then I try to figure out from what angles things are going to work in the best light. So over there I see a hill and I'm going to want to shoot that first with the temple in the background glowing. I'm going to do that on a zoom lens. Then for a second shot I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to shoot this on the regular standard zoom lens and that's the shot I'm going to show you how to work out a little bit later on. So the light's getting really nice so I'm going to give you a little bit of a walkthrough before I go out there and shoot. I'm going to go shoot way down there because I want some water in my foreground. Now what you want to do to get a really really sharp image is first of all you want to be on a good sturdy tripod. Second of all, you want to have your mirror locked up or else you get some vibrations when the mirror in your DSLR locks up. I like to shoot with a, a remote or you can set your two or 10 second timer so pushing the shutter doesn't create any movement as well. So do all those things and you'll get really sharp, sharp landscapes. You also want to be shooting between like probably F8 and F14 to get the sharpest images. I like to shoot around F9 and that's probably what I'm going to do. As you can see, there's a nice glow on the building, so I'm going to take a couple shots here, and then I'm going to go, go down to the bottom and go to the boardwalk and take the shot that I'll walk you through the editing process of later. Let's go do it. Okay, so I'm at my spot that I quite like. The only problem is the light's quite dull. All day the light has been cool, we've been getting really good clouds. And for a landscape meets architecture shot like this, you need cool clouds to like just add some pop to it. Now. Since I don't have great clouds, I'm going to compensate by doing some other things. First of all, I'm going to use the graduated filter, which should darken the sky a little bit. I'm going to wait until the sun's been down, maybe 10-15 minutes, and I should get some nice blue sky and a light enough foreground for a cool photo. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot like F16, which is, isn't the sharpest photo, but it can still be sharp on the tripod. But what it'll do is it'll smooth out this water that's flowing, and I'll get some nice reflection hopefully and if not it'll just look mirror like in the foreground and at least I'll have that and that's what I'm going to do after I'm done shooting this stuff I'll take you home and we'll do the post processing on this image. Okay so I didn't get home until really late last night so it's actually tomorrow but I'm back home in the digital dark room aka the hostel and before I get into the edit of the images I want to urge you firstly to subscribe to the channel and secondly, head to brendansadventures.com, my website, and you'll have the opportunity to get my travel magazine free when you sign up over there. So go over, do that. I swear there's some other cool things on the website, like the Avatar Mountains in Zhangjia, Ji, China. Lots of cool stuff. Head over that way. Let's get to the edit. So these are my images from yesterday. I had amazing light at the start of the day, uh, late afternoon. I got really cool light. These images aren't edited that hard at all. I hardly touched them. It was just perfect light. That's all you got. So really cool cloud formations. Uh, I ended up with 37 keeper images from the whole day yesterday at the temple, which is a really high rate. Usually you're happy if you get, you know, four or five, six images you're really pleased with. I got a lot. 
So I'll scroll through them really quick so you can see what I came up with during the day. And then we'll get into the edit of the one image I promised you. So yeah, some cool stuff. I did a little bit of HDR in here, but as you can see, the light was nice enough. These are the two images side by side. This is non-HDR. This is HDR. Really didn't need the HDR to bring out the light. It was just really good. Um, it was hard capturing the entire uh, temple in there. As you can see, I used the, the 10 millimeter Sigma lens here, and there's just a ton of distortion because it's just a massive building from up close and personal. Um, this is one of my favorite images. There were some Buddhist monks walking down, and I just had phenomenal light up here. So I'm really happy with that image. Uh, usually in the daytime, I don't get a lot of images, so that's cool. Had a little bit of a photo shoot with my model here. Uh, the cow in front of the temple as I hiked around to my spot. And then basically I just waited for the light to arrive. And I was talking about waiting until I got the glowing light on top of the hills. Basically, we were perched over here. The sun was going down on this side of the image. And so it glows onto this side. And when you get mountains, they create a shadow. And you get a nice glow right on top of the mountains, as you'll see later in the images. And uh, like, for example, there, it's starting here. It's still a little bit low, a little bit harsh. And then, boom, you start to see it here. You get this really cool glow. And that's what I was waiting for over there. This is the one I'm going to show you eventually how to edit. Um, I, I really like this image. This was probably my, my favorite from the day. Uh, and then after that, the light got really harsh really quick. And I told you I was going to show you how to edit this one, but really the image didn't come out great just because the sky went really dull on me. So I'm going to go back and show you the one that's a little bit harder to edit. So let's go do that right now. Um, I believe it's this one. Yeah, no. Sorry, my bad. Um, the one below it, I'll show you how to edit this. I shot this on the Sigma 10 to 20 uh, millimeter super wide, I believe. I'll bring it into the develop module and then reset it to show you all the work I did. I did edit this image quite hard, so believe me. I shot this image at 17 millimeters. F16, the reason I shot F16 is I wanted to bring the shutter speed down a little bit and kind of smooth out the water a little bit to give the reflection a chance here. Uh, I would have liked to go a little bit more than that in terms of shutter speed, but the light wasn't cooperating. It was too bright, but I got beautiful light as you can see here. Now, this image, image is edited quite hard. I will admit to that, but it's not probably as hard as you think. Now, let's reset this image and we'll go there. So reset, you can see everything's muted, everything's a little bit dull. And that's just because the light was harsh. And we make some simple adjustments to this thing and, and we got ourselves an image. So first things first, there's way too much grass in the foreground here. So I'm just going to bring up, bring it up there. I don't want to chop off the building too much um, to there. And you see how I have the temple now right at two-thirds. That's exactly where I want it. It helps draw the eye to the subject. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to darken the sky using a gradient. Over here, this is your gradient filter. Everything's reset. You just run it like this, and then you drop your exposure down. Now, we shoot in raw files for this reason. You can basically shoot, go all the way down to minus 2 without losing a lot of detail or ruining the image quality at all. I'm not going to go that crazy. I'm going to go to about minus 1.15 there. And I'm also going to drop the highlights a bit to bring out the color. And now I'm also going to get a little bit tricky and add a little bit of saturation to bring out more color. And then I'm done with that. And as you can see, that one little edit and already the image is miles better. I'm also going to do the exact opposite. And I'm going to add a gradient to the foreground just to bring out that reflection a little bit more. And I'm going to, you see, I can crank the exposure to about two times again without ruining it too much and I'm gonna to go to about 0.7 something there and sweet and basically the image is done so it's edited harder than you think but really not that bad I'm gonna add some contrast to bring out the glow in the background and the darks I'm also gonna increase the shadows just by a touch to bring out the foreground I'm gonna drop the blacks again to add some more contrast to the image and then I'm going to probably change the white balance just a touch 
you go in, you see it's a, just a bit blue. So I'm just going to moderate that a little bit by adding some some uh, some warmth, and now it looks white. When you're struggling with your white balance a bit, the best thing to do is to find a spot in the image that you know is white and just play with the white balance until that's white. You can see this whole building is now perfectly white. That also helped this. Now the background here is really golden and beautiful. And that's the image, people. When you shoot good photography at the right time of day, you don't need to edit really hard. But you do need to go into Lightroom or Photoshop or something like that just to bring it out, just to make it that much better, just to add the little improvements and make the image pop. And that's all I've done. I'm going to do my final bit of the the image just by adding a little bit of vibrant and voila we've got our finished image it's done it's lovely I'm stoked about that image and how it came out I hope you like the image I hope you liked checking out the the temple the monastery here in Shangri-La China Shangri-La has been awesome to us we love this town and I hope you check in next time to the show be sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything we've got lots of really cool tutorials and on location stuff on Brendan Vance in photography. As I mentioned before, don't forget to head over to brendansadventures.com and head down to the sidebar here to get your free subscription to my travel magazine, which has a ton of really cool travel photography stuff. And yeah, that's it for me. I'll catch you next time on the show. It's been a blast. Peace.